Parental discretion is advised. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, are you enjoying the Wrestling Mayhem Show? Are you finding value in these conversations? Do you want to support it so we can become even bigger? Check out patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Ladies, gentlemen, mammals, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show 428. I'm Sorgatron at Sorgatron on the Twitters. Ready to talk professional wrestling in a very amateur manner with you tonight uh of course with me uh, uh the best at the amateur is papa lunchbox at dj lunchbox on the twitters how you doing sir hello everyone no 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 it no, no. That's I, the papa oh, no. lunchbox no, no. and i am here on the wrestling mayhem no, yes show. he is but... it is episode oh, 428 no <laughs> i am in the middle of a sentence and you are trying to cut me off trying i am to. just simply trying to Old do guy. the introduction Dusty to balls. the wrestling mayhem show number 428 here yeah. on the sorgatron network one of these days find this podcast nope. network anywhere on they're not coming on back the internet <laughs> also with us from johnstown also oh no no also Johnstown. with us from johnstown pa <laughs> is bobby fj town i have no way of topping that so i'm not even gonna try <laughs> of course this is your wrestling man show where uh we talk things i already did that part but you should go check out our friend basic sickness at basic sickness.com supplies the awesome um stuff with the musics and the things at the beginning of the show the theme music and he's got free stuff right. over there you want to check us check us out yeah, at wrestling mayhem show.com itunes okay. stitcher spreaker youtube iheart radio video and audio formats however you prefer please share rate tell your friends comment all that kind of stuff interact with us in some Buy manner it, but no, that's later. That's later, Bobby. Oh, okay. You can also interact with us by hitting good us up times. at goodtimesatwrestlingmayhemshow.com good or the phone number 412-206-WMS0. And actually, if you go to our website at wrestlingmayhemshow.com, there is a call us button. That will you, you, you hit the button, you type in your own phone number, because you should know that one, and then it will call, call you myself. to talk to us that we will put on the air. But, Sword, that easy. I don't call myself. I don't know my number. Yeah, I. You know what? I I work in like customer service, and I get people saying that a lot. And uh, just as a, a quick aside to them, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> you don't know your own phone number. What? Fu- who fucking raised you? You're supposed to know your own phone number. What <laughs> the fuck is rotting in your brain? Et phone who? Hmm. ET so now that that's over. Number. Uh, you can also check us out uh, at Mayhem Show on the Twitter. No, 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 not that again. I'm Wrestling sorry. Mayhem I'm Show sorry. on Facebook, on Google Plus, and of course the Great Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group, where a lot of conversation is happening. And you can join us here live every Tuesday night at live.sorgatronmedia.com, or you can hop in the chat room just like Wheels, Matt Carlin's uh, intern Mike, who's been joining us and tweeting things all night for the show. Uh, and Juggalo John, of course, uh, and and that's every Tuesday night, nine o'clock p.m. Eastern time. That you can do that, and just go to the site if you can't remember the addresses and stuff. We got all that stuff up there, and of course you can support us if you dig the conversation. If you think you found value in this show, please are join our Patreon, Patreon.com/slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. If you give a dollar an episode, that's just Roughly four bucks a month. You can put a cap on that if you want to. Or even just give a little bit. Give a dime. Give a penny every month. Something minuscule. We appreciate every little bit uh, to help uh, put some money back into the show. We had maybe an electrical fire fire earlier tonight. I'm probably going to have to replace something very soon as soon as I figure out where that came from. We need a fire hose. Apparently, I need to get a fire (laughs) extinguisher. (laughs) Buy Um, sorg a fire hose. Yes, exactly. (laughs) Uh, Those are the kind of things we're dealing with here. But, of course, thanks to the Wrestling Red. 
Revolution.com, who's been supporting us since uh, uh, near day one on that Patreon. And of course, Bo Diggity! Woo! Or, or should we say, like, uh, not uh, uh, Eva Marie? Woo. 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 And of course, let's start off the show proper with the only Nate with. Wow, words, huh? Uh, with the only way we know how with the fan mail. Riz writes in. Who wants the Riz mail? I feel like. I want. You, I want, you, want, you want this one? You want this, buddy? Because he's. He's my thumb buddy. Oh. Whoa, whoa. He's my thumb buddy. WMX! Man, I haven't typed in this thing in a while. How do I email? I thought you guys were going to say you were peen pals. No, 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 no. <laughs> peen pals is something different. <laughs> That's something entirely different. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I do like updates from the WWE to come straight to my phone via text messages. And while I do like knowing that WWE signed Kenta or the guy CM Punk took the GTS from... Dash A? I don't know what that is. I have two main gripes about it. Uh, gripe number one. I get Hulk Hogan. The man made WWE and WCW what they were and deserves to be there to tell the people of Japan that the biggest names in Japan has now been signed to WWE. I get that. I get that they had to make a spectacle and make Kenta look as huge as he does in Japan in America, as he should be. The only thing I don't like, and this is nitpicking to the 10th degree, but it is a big nit to pick. Why the fuck is Jimmy Hart there? Is he going to be managing Kenta? Has Kenta known the value of having someone who has done so much for managing wrestlers outside the U.S.? Gripe number two. Why the hell did they have to wake me up with this announcement whilst on vacation? Not to mention it wasn't even a good hour. 7.30 a.m. on a Sunday? On a Sunday? Japanese yeah. time. What? Japanese time. Japanese time. Couldn't they wait for like two hours like they do with every other announcement? I'm going to get off my soapbox, but before I go, go to insertcointobegin.com and read some pretty damn good stuff from Chachi Bobby and myself, especially myself. In fact, just search for my name and just read all of my articles. They are top-notch and may lead to the treasure that's hidden in a very secret place. Spoiler alert, it's in my belly button. Double spoiler alert, not anymore. Yeah, oh, gross. Okay. Until next time, the Riz, T H E E, the E stands for nothing. It's actually just there because the Riz on Twitter was taken. Postscript from at Jack Knight NXT on Twitter. The Drifter at I am Samson WWE drifts into hashtag NXT Tampa, making his at WWE NXT debut. Hashtag congrats, Elias. And there's a link. And, and, and he says, is. Is that our Devin? Devin Devinson. Devin Devinson. And yes, it looks like uh, it looks like he is. He's a very clean drifter. Uh, I don't know. So, I don't know. Sorg's bringing yeah, that up. I'm bringing it up. Bring looks it up. like it's going to be a cool Sorg character. Sorg's going to bring it up. Yeah, I think so. He needs you know, a little dust and a little filth on his hobo this, costume. Okay. But. So this does kind of liken back. We, we talked about it. I don't know if we talked about much here or on the indie, indie show. Uh, but yeah, he uh, when he kind of, you know, as I becoming trainee with the uh, airbrush tights character, he used to come out with a mic stand and he would read the lyrics into the mic as part of his thing. And sometimes as a heel, he'll hit people with the mic. Now he comes out with the guitar and he was he is he was a member of a band. He did have a band, a garage band, uh, to the point where one of his opponents came out to one of his tracks to fuck with him. <laughs> nice. I'm pretty sure nice. it was Jimmy DeMarco that came out to one of his so, tracks one time. So he can play guitar then, right? So so I'm pretty sure he can legit play guitar. And from That's the awesome. rumblings I hear, yes, we have an inside source. Uh, the rumblings I hear were just, it's going to be awesome when you see this. Um, cool. And I this picture just, just makes the imagination uh, just... Mm -hmm. Explode. Uh, they like need. They really do need to filthy him up, though, because if he's gonna be a, like a drifter, he needs to be filthy. Because as it is, he just kind of looks like a swarthy Spaniard. 
without well, if pants it is on. on our transy grandpa come back <laughs> <laughs> make sure are we tagging him are we tagging him to let him know that we're, we're critiquing the little bit we know yeah. about his new character can yeah. we make sure that's happening uh, out there uh uh mike uh <laughs> rampant speculation yes yes i'm trying i'm trying to get logged in so i can retweet this picture actually uh, as well so um uh, back to that on uh kenta that was signed any thoughts mm-hmm. i'm not i i know kenta as a name from over there uh this is where i think we need amen uh, uh for this kind of thing he kicks people really hard i watched <laughs> a youtube video and he kicks people really hard Okay. There was um, the only thing I really re- I've heard about Kenta was he had an amazing match with I think someone named Kobayashi. Mm, I don't know. Okay. I may be uh, feigning <laughs> more <laughs> ignorance uh, just so Eamon will just shit his pants. Um, but I don't know. Maybe it's also Kenta, but it's with all spelled out. I don't know. You know who can beat Kobayashi? Joey I don't know. Chestnut. Joey Chestnut. Joey Chestnut? Oh, wait, no, Joey Chestnut was the guy who um, did that song with the Roots. Huh. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. God, that was a good song. <laughs> wow. Uh, what uh, now, Sorg? I, I don't know. <laughs> you know what? I don't know how to you follow that up. Um, Joey, Joey, I'm sorry. Joey I was Joey. doing this. I started doing a track my happiness uh, 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 track your happiness survey while this is happening because it's a really easy what? thing. And then it gave me like this word <laughs> problem about a ladder <laughs> representing where people stand in my country. Uh, and I just completely lost my shit over here. Did you, did um, you just gold that go down a like a face rabbit hole? No, no, no. It, this is a, this is a text message thing I signed up for, and it just completely destroyed me. You signed what? up for You're it? You're supposed to. Yes, it, it's from. from the I show? know. No, I know the guy. I know the guy that did it. He's a TEDx speaker. Um, a local. And I've, I've done a couple of podcasts with him, and I wanted to check it out. And I'm trying to get oh, back into it. That sounds awesome. That sounds 100 percent like something that uh, it should have came through on the awesome cast. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> um, I tell you, I don't want my country. <laughs> no, 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 Coulter. <laughs> no. Okay. No, so kidding. with that, just kidding, since the- I just screwed all of that back, I'm gonna I'm gonna make up for it <laughs> by giving you a voicemail. Maybe what? if this works, you get a free voicemail. This, you get a free voicemail from, I believe, Matt Carlin. What's up, Mayhem Crew? It's your pal in the mainstream media. I just uh, wanted to drop you a quick voicemail, let you know that I'm thinking about all y'all while I'm driving home from nice. work, and I just want to go. Oh my God, Sting! Did you see Sting last night on Raw? It was so awesome, wasn't it? Awesome, honey. Sting was on Raw. <laughs> Shut up. Anyway, um, I thought the, um, the little bit they did with Sting was really cool. I thought very atmospheric and moody. It was awesome uh i also like the fact that the crowd reacted to him that makes me very optimistic about possibly future things coming down the pike and look i get the idea although although i did read that the crowd did boo at the end of it that he wasn't actually coming out uh, so yeah. but I, I heard mostly cheers on on, on tv then again they, they chanted boring for Wade, bray wyatt but we'll, we'll yeah what the f anyways <laughs> look i did watch wrestling in the 90s i was there unlike some of you I did watch wrestling in the 90s, and I do understand that the idea of Sting is better than Sting itself, but I'm still a little bit excited. And I just want to know, quick question for you guys, who, what, what? Can't that mean we're born? No, none of them are born, they're all babies. Um, question Wait. for you is, um, if you're going to make one match with Sting in WWE, what match are you going to make? I think... I shut up. I think I would <laughs> like to see Sting versus Bray Wyatt. I think it would be awesome. I think it's WrestleMania caliber, but uh, I want to hear what you guys think. Uh, it would be a good match for Sting in WWE, and I'll hang up and listen. Okay, bye. I don't know. I don't know. What? What? So who would you have? Save Sting came in the, in tomorrow. Who okay. would you have him face in WWE? Do you want a real answer or a snarky answer? Uh, <laughs> both. Both. Qualify both. Okay. Uh, for the snarky answer, <laughs> uh, a handgun. Hmm. Or some kind of lethal injection. Uh, oh, for a real oh, answer, man. I'd like to see him wrestle Chris Jericho. Okay. Uh, that would be good. Okay. All right. No. Two guys no, that didn't I, really I, mix I, it I, up. I, 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 I also want to qualify that with I have not seen Sting wrestle at all in TNA, so I don't know where he's at yeah. on his you know wrestling spectrum. So, eh, 
He's thing. Just throw that out there. He's, he, I mean, he's not bad. I mean, he's not like it's not like Ric Flair when we're like, oh god, retire, please retire. We don't want you to die. Please, please. Retire. <laughs> it's not like it's not like Hulk Hogan bad. <laughs> no, oh yeah, no, it's not even Hulk Hogan. Like he can actually kind of move, you know. Um, I mean, he never. It's not like he ever did like crazy stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I can't say that he really, you know, I, I, I think he had a good match with Ric Flair, <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. But no, I think, he, no, I think if uh, paired with the right person, I think he could, he could pull out a pretty good match. And I think he would care a little bit more to being in WWE. Um, who, who would that right person be? Who would that? Bobby, do you have somebody? I would like to see him against Cesaro so that I can just see Cesaro swing him. <laughs> Into the crowd. Okay. Cool. Okay. And or, or or seriously, um, maybe like a person like Del Rio that could might that might could carry him to a good match. I mean, all I can really I think th- Del Rio is a good good carrier. All course. I can really think, and I know it won't be nearly as big as what we've done before, and I feel like this could be a SummerSlam match or or something like that. Um, I feel like you have to have kind of the generation match. You kind of ha- need to have Sting take on John Cena. You know. Yeah, something of that sort or or sting <laughs> or or orton as the legend killer takes on sting you that know would, that would be kind of good mm-hmm. or sting yeah, triple H. Kinda, he, he brings it back and he's like there's one legend i never got to kill yeah well he already did <laughs> who did he do that with he just did that like in the last couple of days jericho with jericho yeah 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 oh, he did that on smackdown that's right yeah, he um, said you, you you can most people many people can consider you a legend now so and guess what that. I do with the legends? Yeah, yeah, he, legend. that, yeah. He, he sticks that in there. It, it's still part of him. It's not just the mm-hmm. overreaching part of him anymore. Um, I don't know. I, that, that, that's, it has to be something on that level. I, I can't. I, he's not going to come back and just like be an RVD and job out a bunch of guys to, to, to put them over. Well, he's too big for I, that. I, Go I, going back to Orton, I give Orton a lot of shit. But uh, I was going through my time hop the other day, and it was about a year or two, or uh, I can't, can't remember how many years it was. But uh, the RKO from the Evan Bourne out of the Airborne. Mm-hmm. And I just was Somebody. like, man, the only time I really, really liked Randy Orton was that <laughs> moment. <laughs> I was like, that was amazing. But still, um, so, I, don't, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if, who else. Uh, if you guys get any ideas who'd like, you'd like Sting to take on uh, upon his arrival, uh, you know, somebody realistic in, in today, you know, uh, you know, hit us up on at Mayhem Show. Hit us up on the Facebook, on the on the Google Plus. Let, let us know what you think, please. Because uh, I'm kind of I'm kind of curious. What's that? El Torito. Because everybody talks about Undertaker, right? El Torito. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, everybody talks about Undertaker. So I think I feel like that's the only matchup anybody's thought about. And it makes sense ish. But um, I don't know. I think I think it makes less sense without the streak now, or does it make more sense without the streak? Interesting. Uh, hey guys, I want to take a second give a shout out to friends of ours, pizza friend of ours. We like pizza pals. Pizza friends. Our pizza, pizza pal friends. on this show friends are the best kind of friends. is Slice on Broadway. Slice on Broadway dot com. If you want to check them out, they're here in the South Hills of Pittsburgh, right on the T line. If you take that mode of transportation, if you're around the area, or if you're in town, or there's opening a new place over in Carnegie, PA. So if you're ever in town on your way to or from the airport, just stop off that exit there before you hit the tunnels. Uh, a few exits before you hit the tunnels, uh, and you can uh, grab some awesomeness i can't wait to check out the new place and see see how it's rolling and uh we'll, we'll be sure to report on that when that happens as well so to go check them out slice on broadway.com tell them the mayhem sent you tell them you heard about us uh i believe it's at slice underscore pgh on the twitter is as well uh so please support the people that support the show with their pizza Pizzreon. it's a good cost peach tree on pizza tree on we got one more email guys from that good writer every week with the great discussion questions, Dustin. Sup, Mayhem Brethren. I want to take time to recognize the excellent interview with Matt Tremont. 
I, I did a whole interview with him, and I still can't remember his name. Uh, on the Indie Mayhem show, that's yeah, you hear that's a good show. I have followed his career since he debuted in the CZW, and his throwback style is awesome to watch. I feel like he would have done a better interview than I would have. Um, you covered many topics about his career, and I just wanted to tell you guys that it was a great listen. Um, I, I have heard from wrestlers they enjoy the show. That is the best <laughs> for for that show. Uh, I uh, you know the last couple of shows I've been to, people have mentioned a, a, about it to me. Uh, so I've been getting been able to get a little bit of feedback from the wrestlers, you know, and that's the biggest thing. Because I don't want to come off like a you know freaking indie know it all or, or something mm-hmm. like that, you know. Uh, and I hope we are having good discussions on there. And yeah, for well, you guys that come on here for the WWE stuff, it's not something you know you're not going to know half these people, but you could know somebody from your area ish since we do spread it get to know them. Yeah. You get to know them. You know, these are, these are the people you never know which of these people could be the next John Cena's Mm -hmm. or CM Punk's or Daniel Bryan. Um, I mean, look at the guy we were just talking about. Devin Devinson. No, really it's a God. I'm so messed up with that. I can't remember his real name. Samuel Elias. Is that what he's really calling himself? It's like I am Samuel or something on Twitter. I, I, I don't am know. Samson, isn't it? Look at Shulo. He's Shulo. He'd all be Logan always Shulo. be Shulo to us. Uh, but he's Sam- up there. I am he's Samson. Been, and you know, other guys like Corey Graves has been on the show a couple of times. You know, uh, and that's awesome. And that's what we're hoping uh, to get the next line of people hopefully coming up there. Um, oh, hell, uh, first guest Joe Dabrowski. He's going to be on pay per view, not i pay per view, pay per view in the near future. Oh. Uh, so that's that's really cool to see. Questions? Sorry. Number one, this... Uh, oh, no, it's a TNA question. I think we've got a bad mix on here for this. <laughs> let's do it. Let's, okay. do it. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. I, I apologize. I, I, apologize. TNA. I apologize. You did watch it? I, I I will tell you in a moment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this coming week will be the return of the Six Side of Ring to TNA. Um, I know that not everyone is looking forward to it, but it will be nice to uh, throw Impact back into a more positive time. My question is, uh, do you feel TNA fans would be so willing to see it return had it not been cast aside as petty when Hogan announced that they were moving to a traditional ring? I see it as a sign of what the Hogan regime did to the company. Yeah. I feel like it is that something different. I know it is the silliest thing. I know wrestlers complain about the ring, but it was something that made them look different right off the bat. And mm-hmm. they, and as much as they failed in this, they really needed to stick out as an alternative. And every time they took one step towards the alternative, they took step two steps into Me Too WWE. And the six sided ring is like the icon of of this idea right that we want tna succeed and this is the direction the, the why maybe we hung on a little longer uh, bobby you you have some thoughts i'm sure I, I i'm glad they're just trying something new not new but going back to something old that is feels fresh uh, it's something different than wwe is putting out right now however i heard that tna was having a battle royal on thursday night and i i as everybody knows, I, I love Battle Royals. Who doesn't? Mm-hmm. So I decided, oh, I'm going to check out. And I, I caught the tail end of the Battle Royal. I just finished NXT because I watched it on tape delay because I was watching something else at the time. But I digress. I, I turn to, T, or to Spike TV, and what do I see? Jeff Hardy, the winner of the Battle Royal. And I'm like... Nothing has changed, and I immediately <laughs> changed the channel back to what I was watching before. It's like, well, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think, there, LB? Uh, no, I don't think that uh, that the fans are embracing it because, uh, like, as a fuck you to Hogan, I think the fan, I think the TNA fans' perspective is basically something along the lines of something new, ah, something different, yeah. Yeah, yeah, something different, and then it'll <laughs> it'll be along for a while, and maybe they'll switch back to the four sided ring, and TNA fans will be like, "Oh yeah, yeah, something new, something different." Yeah, yeah, give me that, give me that. Let's try that out. Um, because, like no, Bobby no. said, they're just really, really get beaten over the head a lot with mm-hmm. just the same stuff over and over. <laughs> then they'll turn and see Jeff Hardy on the TV winning a battle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jeff, yeah, Jeff Hardy, Jeff Hardy can jump off of anything. It doesn't matter how many corners it has. Yep. 
Um, <laughs> so. I party uh, jumped out of, off of an octopus last week. <laughs> <laughs> an eight sided octopus. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> abyss, abyss has like a pet or- octopus. <laughs> And listen, if this if this was a true story, I would fucking watch TNA. <laughs> that sounds interesting enough. Yeah. Jeff Har- Abyss has a pet octopus, and Jeff Hardy is fucking with it. I would watch that all day long. <laughs> Anyways, um, okay. <laughs> Question you number two. TNA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't qualify. I don't think either of us watch TNA. Any of us, but nope. but this is the thing that's trying to get us back. So we're... I don't know what the fuck that is. What? <laughs> TNA? TNA. Total oh, yeah. nonstop action <laughs> adventure. Wasn't wasn't that the name of the strip club from uh 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 fuck fuck I killed it. I, I didn't think of the name in time and the joke didn't go off. Fuck. <laughs> Tango and Cash. Wasn't that Sorg What's, I don't know. I know, you don't, I know you don't do this, but go back and edit the show. <laughs> <laughs> to make it seem like I said the joke in a quick manner, isn't that the name of the strip club from Tango and Cash? The Why, yes. Yes, it is. Ha, ha, ha. There. Thank that's you, Bobby. Not, that's even natural laughter, right? Yeah, that's good Good natural laughter, yeah. I'm, I'm, I think I'm thinking of the wrong movie. Harley Davidson and the Marlboro Man. <laughs> what? Fuck. <laughs> this, this is going poorly. Uh, Turner and Hooch. That was such a Turner fun movie. The strip club Turner from Hooch. Turner and Hooch. That's this is a right. strip club from Kindergarten Cop. <laughs> I <clears throat> email. So back to the email. Um, <laughs> Please. Um, Harley <laughs> Davidson and Marlboro Bell Man is not on Netflix right now, but I can watch Aww. Easy Rider instead. Uh, Easy Rider. Question number two. My word of that the week. Nash Bridges it, I, in it. Word, what? <laughs> Nash Bridges doesn't have Nash Bridges in it. Whatever that guy's real name is, Don Johnson. Don Johnson's not in that. Nash Bridges. <laughs> he played Nash Bridges, which was it was Nash Bridges was Ray Donovan before Ray Donovan. You know, I really today. like those movies with Walker Texas Ranger in them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Referred to Don Johnson as Nash Bridges. Yeah. That's right. And then Nash Bridges is the name that you, that stuck to him out of all the things Kevin, he's played. Kevin Nash Bridges. Hey, that's that's how I was introduced to Don Johnson. Oh my god, Nash this female. Uh, no, question Miami two. Vice? Who the fuck my- watches Miami Vice, Bobby? We're not all 90. All right, let's get to the email. My word of the week I'd enjoy your opinions on would be the word heat. Heat quotes heat traditionally heat was reserved for the response that a heel would get for getting under the skin of fans i believe it can be applied to any character's interaction or emotional investment the crowd has with the character john cena has true heat because regardless of if fans like him or not uh he has their emotional investment um heat is more me it's it's heat versus pop i think is is the equation there now heat is used Anytime somebody's pissed. Um, and this is, again, being around wrestlers, etc. Uh, they do just use that. It's like, hey, I don't want I don't want to get heat for this. I want get I don't want to get mad at people mad at me. It's part of the language, you know, mm-hmm. uh, as far as I can tell. Uh, so as far as but we're talking about fan reaction. No, it is. It is the angry response. Um, so. I'm kind of re-evaluating his question. Uh, that rib, that rib had an enormous amount of heat with it. What'd you say? That rib? That rib. I think you're using enormous. that. I think you're using that wrong. You mean, I like, use the, that in two Mc, ways. Are you talking about the McRib? Yes. Like the sandwich? <laughs> if you were talking about Bobby, food and wrestling. Bobby, there is something wrong with your with your palate. McRibs are not <laughs> spicy. There is no heat in McRibs. Kind of hardly Barbecue food. Kind of hardly and food. And he's not even talking about food, no, Bobby. Come no, on, now man. I'm hungry. Come I'm on, hungry, too. I'm, hungry. I'm always hungry. Oh, Bobby. <laughs> Please. <laughs> uh, I, I, have, I have a, a, a thing about this. Okay. Thing. Okay. You know, okay. And do you mean an actual answer that doesn't include Nash Bridges? <laughs> Listen, if you want me to include Nash Bridges, I can. <laughs> You can okay. work Nash Bridges in every angle. I'd rather show. not. I worked, I'd rather I worked not. Ray Donovan into this show already. I can work magic. 
I made a tango and cash reference. Anyway, um, Incredible. Yeah, I, I, as I've always understood it, heat is, you know, uh, when a bad guy does bad guy stuff and he gets booed. Heat. Crowd doesn't like him because his character is real bad. Yeah. Bad guy stuff. Heat. Stephanie McMahon, heat right now. Stephanie McMahon uh, has heat. Uh, okay. Vic, Vicky Guerrero, like, excuse me. What's that? Yeah. Vicky Guerrero's excuse That's- me. I think it's the yeah. definition of heat. Yes. Um, but both of those characters for a short period of time had uh, what I've also heard heat referred to as with a modifier as go away heat. They don't get booed because they don't like – because they're bad guy. They get booed because they're super annoying and people just don't want to see them. I've heard you know, X-Pac has had this in the past. Uh, mm-hmm. Vicky Guerrero has absolutely had this in the past. Mm-hmm. Um Stuff like that, you know what I mean? I think that that's it. when when Rey Mysterio got booed <laughs> at the Royal Rumble in Pittsburgh. We didn't boo him because he was a bad guy. We booed him because we wanted him to go away. <laughs> yep, this is so. true. This is true. Um, I had a modifier. I had an extra one for that. On, on all the best episodes of Nash Bridges. <laughs> <laughs> all right. No. Teach Marin. What do you think, Bobby? Teach. What do you think, Bobby? <laughs> I, I agree with it with uh, Lunchbox's statement. I I think heat is like what bad guys draw, mm-hmm. doing bad guy things, mm-hmm. and um, like uh, yeah, but, yeah. Nothing more needs to be said. I don't think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't think it's reversible. I don't think it's re- uh, it, it, I don't think it's reversible that John Cena gets good heat because he's getting both reactions. It is he's getting yeah. heat and he's getting pop, and it mixes into this interesting thing. And yes, he's getting a reaction, but it still is two different reactions. It's, he's it's a reaction tornado. It, it oh, kind yes. of is. It kind of is. Front, and, and, front, and meaning we're also outside of a zone where there's one guy that's the big merch thing, right? Like John Cena, mm-hmm. I think still is the big merch thing, but. There are just as many people that are Daniel, Daniel Bryan fans that are, you know, it's not Hulk Hogan only. It's Hulk Hogan and Macho Man and Ultimate Warrior era, you know, yeah. and even more so because a bunch of people are buying Sheamus shirts. And and what is yeah. he like fifth string from the top at this point? And he has the worst catchphrase in WWE. Fella. Maybe all of wrestling. Fella. Hey, Where hey, 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 hey. Over I know there. he's your friend. It's my birthday your friend. friend. It's my birthday but friend. I'm going to get a shirt and just put sir across it. Sir? You can do that. Actually, you can't. Sir. Actually, you can't because I think Kevin Kevin Smith has that. That's true. That's true. Maybe right. dude or I don't know. But okay. it, it's, it's catchphrase is lame. There's another question, guys. Number three, I didn't, I didn't like Rollins' new theme music when it debuted, but I uh, must say I am slowly becoming a fan. What theme music did you hate when you first heard it, but slowly it became a great part of that character? Uh, Christian. I liked his old music. Christian! Like I've, I, but I've liked yeah. certain versions more than others. Like yeah. the rock version of it was great. Loved it. Um, but like early on is like, I mean, again, the song morphed over time. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's I'm, that's what I I'm got. gonna I'm gonna say Cesaro's theme right now. Okay, I did not like it at first. It's starting to grow on me to the point where I'm like, oh, Cesaro's song, cool, it's on. Mm-hmm. I I just did not like it at first, but now it's it's starting to become part of his character, like like Dustin said, you know. So, I think it's good. Uh, the Wyatt family. Really? Yeah, I I did, when when they first came out, I did not like that song, but what? now I'm into it. I'm that into was it. like the best. What, what really pushed me over the edge was that live performance at the pay per view. And I was yeah. like, oh, this is fucking awesome. I was really I, surprised that that got the live performance. I'm sorry, Bobby, for stepping on you. Okay, that's right. Go ahead. That's, oh, that's it. Um, I, I didn't. I didn't like the accordion version of "He's Got the Whole World in, oh, in, in, so in, in His Hands." Um, but I'm I'm glad they changed that because I did not. I know a lot of people. It was like a mixed reaction. Like half the people liked it, half the people didn't like it. I was in the side that did not like it. I did, uh, you can tell. Too creepy. You can tell there's somebody with enough power in the back that like like it got to that point where mm-hmm. they got like it got enough approval to be played. But once it finally presented in the atmosphere, it was like 
no, we're not doing this. This is too creepy for us. Yeah, it was like, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I was, I'm was. i afraid that if they kept going with it, like we talked about before, it would get go away heat. Still mm-hmm. don't like, I think out of the, the best out of this, uh, Dean Ambrose has the best new music out of this. Yeah, um, I still feel yeah. like uh, uh, Reigns gets the, I still want to be the shield guys. I still yeah. believe in the shield guys uh, with with his kind of presentation. So It, it made so, me I'm sad like, that, yeah. It took out the best part of the song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now it's just now it's just generic. Dan it, Dan it, Dan it, Dan, Dan, Dan it. Down the stairs, down the stairs by myself, pull my hair. Uh, mean mugging at the sign wavers should, in front of them. They should do the the Romo ro, <laughs> what? Romeo Echo or for rains Romeo Echo whatever it is or like spell out rains that way. Oh jeez. Um, Instead of shield, guys, uh, uh, you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> uh, guys. Uh, uh, oh well, yeah. I gotta finish the email first. I'm sorry. I, st- I, yeah. I kind of skipped <laughs> the spot. Uh, that's all for me, guys. I just wanted to say that I hated Miz having his face on the <laughs> trunk during his match. I, I thought it, it was great. Uh, but Battleground this year looks to be better a better card than last year's card. Hopefully it delivers. Regards, Dustin. Uh, by the way, uh, Battleground from last year was playing on the network today, and I flipped to it, and I found myself in the midst of yet another uh, RVD versus uh, Del Rio match, and I hated myself. Wow. Also, last night, and RVD almost died. <laughs> yeah, there's that. And this was a hardcore match, apparently. Yeah. Oh jeez! Uh, yeah. <laughs> in Buffalo, Ugh. New York, and man, R- RVD, almost, R- RVD almost got swallowed into a black hole, which was the ring apron. <laughs> <laughs> Caught in the tuna net. Anyways, guys, <laughs> hey, uh, uh, once again, we got a lot of great stuff going over on SorgatronMedia.com. A lot of digital downloads and DVDs for uh, guys like Vicious Outcast Wrestling, the uh, International Wrestling Cartel, Renegade Wrestling Alliance, Prime Wrestling, the best stuff hands down out of Ohio and uh, Western Pennsylvania uh, that you guys can get anywhere in the world. I got people getting these in Australia. I got people getting these across the country. It's been really awesome to see the reactions to this. So go check those out, please, over at sorgatronmedia.com slash store. While you're over there, we also have a mailing list where you'll find out about uh, all of these shows and, and other stuff coming out from Sorgatron Media. You'll also get the latest updates on new releases, sales, all kinds of fun stuff uh, uh, going on there. A little bit of video games, too. It's everything geeky, but I'll tell you, it's mostly wrestling in the long run. Uh, so go check that out. Sorgatronmedia.com slash store. And uh, including a new release coming out this week, RWA Resurrection Six. Great show this past week, and we'll talk about it more on the Indie Mayhem show uh, this week. So please check out the most recent episode of that. I believe we're up to episode... 28 if i'm not mistaken uh for for that uh, a really fun show uh aeroform uh generation dead a lot of good stuff uh, other stuff women's wrestling holy crap guys women's wrestling is actually happening and it was actually pretty good with a no dq match last night uh blow up dolls were a part of the show i won't spoil it but we'll be back with remember wow. when so anyways with that it is time for Remember when? I did not prepare a song. <laughs> and and Sorg, Sorg came back from break too quick for me to think of a song to prepare. <laughs> oh, this week on Remember When... <laughs> the hell? I'm sorry. We're going to talk <laughs> about somebody that we haven't seen in wrestling for months, 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 months. Somebody who who made a big impression on a lot of us. Somebody who changed the game for a lot of us. And of course, I'm talking about Sting. Um, of course, the big promo last night. Uh, and, and for some of us, uh, we're going to just automatically presume you don't have any great memories of Sting from the last... 10 years. Uh, we're just going to disqualify TNA because let's be honest here, uh, <laughs> at least amongst this crew, as you found out in the first half. And of course, Wheels is joining us. I, I don't know how much he remembers. Um, I'm sure it's like. What are you a- saying? I'm, I'm too young to remember Sting? No, no. no I'm, ta- I'm, talking about, I'm talking about your memories of Sting and TNA is like a head wound. Um, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Good point. 
So, but I know you'll have early memories of Sting because you are of that age. Uh, but, yes. So, well, actually, do you want to go first, sir? Do you have any sure, great memories? Not? Like, we introduced Wheels is joining us here on the show. Yeah. Eh, well, why not? You saved the best for this half, so it works. Sting. Uh, of course, I remember Beach Sting, but that was all right. It was okay. It was fun. Loving stuff like that. Kids loved them. I loved, aka, the crow sting. The first time he was up in the rafters with the sad little clown makeup on before he transformed <laughs> it into what everyone knows as the crow sting. I enjoyed, the first thing I enjoyed was the first repel from the ceiling and just saving DDP and all that. And that was great. And he hooked him into the harness and lifted him back up in the air. And I went, that was amazing. They had to have tested the weight of that thing before they did that, mm -hmm. I hope. <laughs> so, I mean, that's my memory of Sting. Just all that battling with the bat and everything. So, Awesome. Awesome. Uh, what about you, Bobby? You got any memories? I mean, did you even watch WCW back in that day? I, I I watched WCW a little bit, not as much as I should have, I guess. Um, the one thing I remember is on the last Nitro when uh, Ric Flair faced Sting. Um, they they were trying to, I guess, decide what match would be fitting, and that one would would be it because they fought on the first Nitro and they fought on the last Nitro. Um, I just remember Sting uh, locking in the Scorpion Deathlock to beat Ric Flair and. It was a good match. Yeah. Then oh, he didn't go to WWE shit. after that. <laughs> was that yours, Lunchbox? I'm sorry. It's all right. Okay. Uh, well, I, I, I'll give you some time here. Uh, mine. Uh, no, okay. I've got another one. Oh, okay. Uh, go ahead, oh. sir. So, uh, some of you may be familiar with this uh, this icon known as Sting. The man um, called Sting. And uh, like Bobby said, when uh, when uh, WCW went under. There were a number of people who just waited out their contract. Mm -hmm. You know, Vince honored them and paid them, but they didn't compete in the WWE. Well, actually, uh, actually, I, I think just to clarify that, I think it was Turner that had to pay th those ones. Was it Turner? Like okay. the contracts, people on a certain level, like the top end guys that had the big contracts, for somehow they were directly with Turner instead of WCW. So the thing was they could buy out their contract on, on so many, you know, so much on the dollar. So they would get a fraction of what they were owed to leave and actually work somewhere else. Or they could wait it out being paid by Turner for several years after uh, WCW went under. It was a weird contract thing. That's how they literally had Turner's pocketbook for that one. But anyways, <laughs> sorry. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> I haven't read um, The Death of WCW for a while. So. Uh, yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, well, Sting, you know, did his thing. He never never appeared in WWE. Kind of went away for a while, and and he was in TNA uh, for a little while. And you know, there's a lot to be said about what happened there. And I'm not the one to say it. You should talk to somebody who watched TNA more while Sting was in there. All, right, <laughs> all I know is he was the Joker for a little bit, whatever. Um, and then uh, his contract lapsed with TNA, and then uh, something amazing happened. Um, for the first time, and this is going to sound like I'm joking, but I'm being sincere. For the first time, really, Sting appeared for WWE on WWE television. And this was, in fact, last night. This is my happy memory of Sting, because I was watching this, and I'm watching the... Um, the, the short commercial for WWA 2K15 or whatever. And it's it's one of those mo wrestling moments that makes me happy where I'm sitting and I'm watching it and I'm like, this is, this is a thing. This is like, like, like when, like, yeah, exactly. Like when <laughs> Bret Hart, there was a time when nobody ever thought Bret Hart would be associated with WWE again. And he came back and he was in the same ring as Shawn Michaels. And I remember watching that with the same feeling of, you know, this was never going to happen, and now I'm seeing it happen. It's it is actually they say this literally every week on WWE Monday Night Raw that history is being made, but it is actual history being made, and I, I really I really dig um, situations like that. So 
That's fine. It is like, um, like, isn't it like almost every wish has been granted as far as wrestling almost. goes at this point? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, aside from things that are, are, are limited to age, ailment, death, mm-hmm. like, if it could be made possible, it has been at this point. Very interesting. Yeah, because you think about it. Sting was one of the only ones who did not jump ship back mm-hmm. and forth from mm-hmm. WWF to WCW. Mm-hmm. And to finally see his name, his face, everything last night when it's finally happened. The final, basically, nail in the coffin, WCW, that mm-hmm. anybody had a memory of, Sting went, all right, I'm okay with this. I'm going to WWF. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's also a nice feeling because, like, his legacy is secure now. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Mm-hmm. Like he's made yeah. peace with the record keepers. So the record keepers are going to, you know, look on him favorably. Although that, only- that is, has something to do with it too. Don't you think you're like, well, I'm going to have to make peace with the record keepers because they're the ones that are yeah. going to write my history in the end. Oh yeah. And mm-hmm. if it's I want same- to have that retrospective, I have to do it with them. TNA has nothing in comparison. That matters mm-hmm. in comparison. So, right. It's I the mean, same feeling as when Hulk Hogan fam- finally came back. It's like, okay, your legacy is secure. You're good now. Bruno. Just don't, don't Bruno, bail again. Bruno, I think, is even yeah. bigger than Hulk Hogan coming back. Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Really? So, yeah, oh, yeah. entirely. You guys, know this, you, guys know this, you guys know who's left, right? CM Punk. Prince IK. <laughs> <laughs> no, the artist formerly known as Prince IK. Yep. yep. He has to make that jump now. It's oh. up to him and Lash LaRue. Lash LaRue. Oh, <laughs> oh shit. Sorg, what about general, you? At least general erection is safe. Uh, you know, for me, yeah. mostly, uh, <laughs> for me, mostly, it, it is that Crow Sting era. Uh, I came in, like, right on the tail end of the uh, Bleach Blonde Sting. Actually, I don't think he was even Bleach Blonde. I think he had colored his hair by then. Um, yeah, I think it was, like, like, a dark brown like your hair right now and stuff, so... Okay. You start to let it grow out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so I was in that weird phase when I finally got into. I was able to see WCW, but I did have a sting moment early on in the early '90s, amongst his great days as the Bleach Blonde Surfer Sting. Um, but this was. Uh, I just looked over at Gonzo and he just creeped me out again. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> It's this weird pose on the couch. I'll take a picture of it when I'm off here. Um, anyways. <laughs> well, no, I, uh, you guys remember a show called Thunder in Paradise? Yes. 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 They watch with a boat with Hulk Hogan and all of his friends. And one episode I was uh, at some relatives that had cable and it was on. Um, because again, didn't have cable. My experience with Thunder in Paradise was the three video movies that they put out uh, that I got to rent. <laughs> like you put video what are you in laughing? In Just that there was three of them. <laughs> there were three. For all I knew, if I didn't have the internet, which I didn't, if I ha- didn't happen to find Thunder in Paradise on cable when I visited my grandparents in the city... I would have thought that Hogan did three movies called Thunder in Paradise, (laughs) Thunder in Paradise 2, and Thunder in Paradise 3. Look them up. That's amazing. That was was my experience. No. (laughs) When are they coming to Netflix? That's what I want to know. Yes, yes. You can get, you can, they're like, they had the entire series for a set for like 10 bucks at Walmart for a while. This close to getting it. Anyways, uh, there was an episode uh, where. Sting was the bad guy. No what? makeup. And what? I recognized him from my black and white wrestling magazines that I got a stack of them from a friend that was getting rid of them. So I have this random, bad guy, right? random stack with like the Steiner brothers and the WWE versus WCW war. And what is this two cage monstrosity that is war games? And the little butcher hiding a hammer in his fat. <laughs> and I knew who Sting looked like. In black and white, and I found him in color with no makeup. Uh, that's my. He was a vaudevillain. He was a vaudevillain. 
<laughs> so uh, let us know your sting moments. So we should get my wife down here. I'm sure she's, she's got a bunch of them. Why? My wife. My wife. My wife. My wife. If I say it loud enough, she'll hear it. Two floors it's up. McRib. It's coming back. No, what? Mc, no. Mc, 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 no. <laughs> but let us know at Mayhem Show. Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook, Twitter, Twitter. Facebook group. No, no, yeah, you can email us too if you have your things. That, that'd be good. You know, if you want to follow up on Remember what? Wins and your correspondence Emails. with us, Dustin, uh, Riz, Rizzle, Rizzifer. Rizzle. But in the, <laughs> in the meantime, another way, uh, not just, I, I, you know, you know, so much we plug the, these guys at this point of the show um, because we have shirts on there. But of course, I think even bigger, we should support the wrestlers as well the yeah. causes out there as well the estates of the wrestlers uh that we want to support like ultimate warrior like andre the giant actually i don't think ultimate warrior is on this but andre the giant macho man uh uh scott hall ultimate guys like dragon that. no that's not ultimate right dragon. no bobby but of course you can start off at pro wrestling com slash wms and I'm Can't sorry, wheels i'm sorry wheels it doesn't look like you're represented on here we had that question over you. the weekend uh we did not uh, maybe okay so can so, i buy a prince ik shirt no uh maybe actually i don't know i don't know we can get the good times at wrestling mayhem show shirt you can get property of mayhem riz if you follow our twitter account was sporting that wherever the hell he is where did he go he Same sitting know? on a beach sitting on we a beach, beach. i know he's mayhem show shirt he's sitting on fly uh, he's sitting on a beach somewhere in a property of Mayhem Show shirt. Doesn't like drinking and doesn't like to go in the water, but loves the beach. Where to go? He's a beach bum. He is a beach the bum. Definition, the very definition well, of a beach bum. While you're there, you can go click around. There's other podcasts represented, including like Jim Ross's podcast. Uh, but like we said, a lot of guys are represented on here. Chris Hero, Cliff Compton, Colt Cabana. We were talking about him off air. Uh, Jake the Snake Roberts, great guys like ACH, AJ Styles, uh, who is going to have a release very soon from Sorgatron Media, by the way. Uh, uh, Tugboat, Fred Ottman, the Shockmaster is represented on there. Evan Bourne is on there. Uh, all the guys you want to support. Go to the P's. ZMI on. Go to the P's. Go to the P's? What's you want to see Prince Ayakawa or whatever the fuck. Uh, there are no P's. There's an ODB no. and then it skips to Rhino. I'm sorry. And then there's Ricochet. Okay. Sorry, sorry, Bobby. But go check it out. Start it off at prowrestlingtees.com slash WS. Support us, support, support all the guys on there, because they're all work really hard and they're it's trying to make it. In this. Some guys don't go to WWE. Some guys don't want to go to WWE. And some guys are making their own. So so go support this independent awesomeness that's going on with podcasting, with wrestling, with wrestling podcasting. All that stuff. So thanks. To those that support the show and Pro Wrestling Tees. And thanks for Pro Wrestling Tees for having our stuff on there. Great company. So Yeah. So, oh, yes. with that, I have a few items. Uh, first of all, like we mentioned before, uh, CM Punk. Did we actually talk about this on the air? I can't remember. It's all kind of jumbling together for me. We kind of did. We kind of did. CM Punk officially placed on WWE.com's alumni page. Sad to me. He's officially gone. I think he'll be back, I want to say within a year or two. I said 10 to 20 years. 10 to 20 said, years? I, like, no, I said, said any, no, anywhere from, from one week to 30 years. What the hell? <laughs> Bobby's, Bobby's hedging his bets. Bobby, I am. Bobby's covering the spread. Um, I am. Wow. Uh, so what do you think he's going to do next? He's teased at a podcast band, uh, uh, you know, what? I guess he could do about anything. I guess he could do. He, he, he's definitely inspired by Jericho, I think, at this point. Mm. Right? CM mm -hmm. Punk yeah. is going to start a podcast. Mm -hmm. And then he's going to put out a, a, a very bad album, like a rap album. <laughs> and then he's going to have his own e-reality show. And then he's going to marry Drake. And he's his his uh, transformation into Kardashian will be complete. <laughs> mm. I found that picture. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess the ultimate question: Does he get a sponsorship with Pepsi? That's none of my business. <laughs> what? That would be awesome to see a CM Punk finally being on TV and going. See, I do drink Pepsi. 
I, I guess so. I guess. Hi, so. I'm not a celebrity on purpose. <laughs> Pepsi. It's Pepsi. The, best the choice in the world. of the CM Punk generation. Oh wow! It's slobbering time over a two liter bottle of Pepsi. Oh wow! <laughs> it's chugging time. <laughs> Oh my. Okay, that's enough of that. Uh, otherwise, we do have <laughs> Battleground. We do have Battle. Hey guys, we got a pay per view this weekend. Are we? Yeah, we First do. of all, yeah. Okay, we're a few months into this. Are, do you guys get excited for pay per views anymore? Yeah, more yeah. so. More because, so. Yeah. We can actually watch them it's legally. Into pay per views. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good time. We have a party to go to. Bobby, come on. I mean, we have always watched our pay per views legally. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yes. yes. They're cheaper. They're just cheaper. That's all. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, of course, we do sense. have Dean Ambrose against Seth Rollins, although we haven't really been talking Maybe. about it, I guess. Maybe. I guess, I guess he's not hurt, though. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, I also... He was no, he's fine. Yeah, he's just real yeah. good. Yeah. I've read... Stuff. Yeah. It was like, I, yeah, he was fine. He yeah. sold the crap out of that, because I yeah. saw him land, and I'm like, holy crap, he just blew his knee out. He, he did so well... That I saw some reports that even the fans in attendance were like, "Oh, he's out of yeah. action, everything." And and the fact I that they... the, yeah, I, I found another report that went, "No, he's fine." The only person that kind of got messed up was Dean Ambrose, but he yeah. had a bloody mouth from the stomp to his head. Mm-hmm. The the fact that they didn't show him on camera after that whole thing that, that really had me it. worried. Yeah, that really sold it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But definitely. Um, and also, we got two out of three falls match with uh, the Usos and the uh, the 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 Whites. Ooh, so yeah. crazy! I, I think I think it's that's going to be a really good match yet again. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can't wait to see that one. Tag team wrestling is good. Some people will seem bored with this. With the, I don't know, with just the Usos or this combination or something. Since it's going so long, I think they've been putting on great matches. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not bored with this at all. I don't mind watching these four go at it. I mean. Okay, you might see jumping and all that, but they seem to like reinvent themselves. Let's do this now, guys. Let's try that. Mm-hmm. It does so, feel like yeah. I, I, I mean, it's it feels like we don't get to mix things up as much. They're like basically the Dust Brothers are 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 fighting Rybaxel, and these two are fighting in single mm-hmm. matches and stuff, and they just spread that over like two to three months with little variation <laughs> whatsoever. It doesn't feel like you're operating a division at that point. You know, it, it, right. it just seems like, well, here's the series, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, even when you got some feud, again, I'm watching Saturday night's main event, you got some feud with, uh, officially like the Bulldogs and the Hart Foundation. They still fight other guys in between, you know, they're still mm-hmm. having a match with the killer bees or, or, uh, uh, Paul Roma and the other Yahoo that the power and the glory. Oh, no, that's, yep. that was later. That was much, much later. Oh, okay. okay. Um, mm-hmm. although he's on there too. Uh, I mean, I mean, it just feels like they're not mixing things up like like they ever did, and I think that's what has generally brought down the tag division all these years. Was I'm sorry, Rybacks were just as horrible in general. I think if they should have released anybody a couple weeks ago, they should have released those two. I kept, like I wouldn't say Ryback more more so than I mm-hmm. disagree. I like Rybacksel. Yeah. Well. I mean, they have a position. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's not its not like a three-man band position. I think they're in a good spot, right, and they yeah. worry. <laughs> Somebody's freaking out in the chat room. <laughs> 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 Ryan right, Baxel or best friends? I'm sorry. What? From Eamon? Oh, my God. I, I'm going to invite him in here. We're going to get him in on this. Um, but, no, I, I think I think Ryan Baxel's a good tag team. <laughs> He said they they wear matching skull caps. They do wear <laughs> matching skull caps. So, um, anyways, but no, I I don't think uh, the tag division is not everything we want it to be. It's not the height of the Shield and the Dust and the and the Rhodes Brothers that you know we had last year. But it's not as bad <laughs> as like the mid of two thousands, I guess. Right? Yeah. Can I, I mean, just say something? Yeah. What's up? What's up Bobby? about Cody Rhodes? Mm-hmm. Cody Rhodes oh, jumps yeah. headfirst into a gimmick, and he commits to it so much. He is amazing. That, that it, 
when he when he blew this the the glitter the star glitter into Goldust's mouth last <laughs> night, I thought like uh, it was I, so I almost, funny. Yeah. the stuff he's so doing funny. the stuff he's doing with um uh where he jumps on the barrier. Mm-hmm. With the crowd and everything, like is is tremendous, and he and him, yeah. him hissing back at Goldust when he he does the <laughs> the hissing is awesome. Yes, that was yes. the best thing he's come up with so far. It's amazing. It's so great. <laughs> but, uh, it, it, I I enjoy those two so much. I mean, hey, please, please, WWE, if you're listening, keep them together for a, mm-hmm. a good while. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. It's a it's a great spectacle. You know, it was great even when they had a dark match with this. So. um Anyways, we got somebody hey, with us. Here. We got some, what's the skull caps here. <laughs> Amen, you have an opinion on this. You guys hate best friends, apparently. <laughs> I'm a supporter. I, I'm a supporter. I, Thank I, you. I Lord. supported one of them. Okay, listen, listen. Well, first of all, Amen. For those, Amen has joined us. Amen, to please co-host on the Indie Mayhem show. Yes, indeed, that you can listen to in about. I don't know. I don't know. We, we got some good feedback on the Indie Mayhem show in our email earlier. I don't, I'm sure you, you did. It. I did yes. see that. Thank yes. you. So thank you. I appreciate that. But back to Rybaxel. Um, those guys are awesome. Ryback has, you know, uprooted himself from obscurity. And, and all you got to do is really pay attention to the promos that they got on WWE's YouTube channel or anything like like search those out because they. They were a testament to why I love Rybacks on that. Maybe that's they, what I need to do, Amy, because it's just like, I'm like, eh. the problem, well, the, Okay, the problem is they wrestle Goldust and Stardust every fucking week. Yeah. That's yeah. the issue. They just need to find something different. Mm-hmm. And then. Okay, yeah, maybe that's what it is. Continue I mean, it. But they, if they just, you know, let Ryback, you know, be the big guy and then. Curtis Axel will be the dopey, you know, what's his face that can't live up to his dot to his dad's shadow. It's gonna be a perfect tag team. <laughs> no, like seriously, that's a great gimmick. That's a great gimmick. That'll work for him. It, 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 it's niche and it can. It, it, I love it. I love it dearly. I, I don't even care. And they have wear. They wear matching skull caps. <laughs> <laughs> wow, tag team. I like that. Tag team. Bro. No, I'm with you. It's it's the we're gonna like it, the the we're going to pair these two teams for three months straight and I, and, is oh, the problem. And I hate how people shitting on, oh, I hate their new mixed theme. Their mixed theme is awesome, okay? Actually, like, I do I mean, like that, yeah. I do kind of like that. So. Fucking... <laughs> Also coming up, of course, we got the big Battle Royal Intercontinental Championship. Are we Battle Royal out at this point? No. Uh, Jeff Hardy is not, not going to win this one. <laughs> we hope. Unless he answer. signs at the last minute. <laughs> I, don't, I, I missed if we talked. If you guys mentioned this, I'm excited for Battleground. Yeah, I looked at the I looked at the card yesterday. I was like, that's a really good fucking card. I think mm-hmm. it's gonna be a great show. I'm excited for that. Love is a battleground. No. That's nope. <laughs> nope, that's <laughs> close, Bobby. It's real close. Pat no. Benatar. Mm. Um, patriotism in pro wrestling. I love how much it's back. <laughs> uh, Rusev yes. and Jack Swagger. Great stuff in the debate last night between uh, Zeb and Lana. Holy I crap! I tweeted, I program. tweeted that this is the pinnacle of Zeb Colder's career, and that man has had a hell of a career. Yep. Yeah. Do the ditch. Yeah. No, I I got to watch it back. I I, I love this segment. It, it, Bruce, I feel like we talk about how you know the idea of how WWE's pushing their stars. I think they're doing an amazing job with Rusev right now. I think he's super over. He's, his offense and, and when he wrestles, you know, people, you can tell, are invested in it. Uh, you know, it's a great gimmick that people are into, you know, and he just makes for a natural heel. And I, and I just love the pairing of Rusev and Lana, and they're really, they're slowly becoming one of my favorites. And Jack Swagger's been super underrated for so long, so I, I, I'm, you know, so excited to see where this goes, I think. Yeah, it, it's been many years since we've seen a feud like this really this good. It kind of reminds me of the days of the Hulk Hogan, Iron Sheik, or mm-hmm. uh, Sergeant Slaughter, and whoever. Hacksaw Nikolai and Hulk Iron Sheik, even. Yeah. Like, so, yeah, and this reminds me of the 80s. I'm sitting there going, am I a kid again? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Awesome. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, so we talked about that, the Battle Royal Women's. There's the women's. There's two women's matches. Oh, two women's matches game, but one's on a kickoff. 
Uh, one is on the kickoff, which I think is kind of cool. The Funkadactyls explode. Yes. Much oh. like the Mega Powers. I am. Oh, I am goodness. sort of on the fence about that. I either think it's going to be good or I think it's going to be really terrible. I think it's going to be really <laughs> bad. What? Well, uh, uh, well, we know who's either, carrying this. Either match. they, either they, they work together long enough to where they understand how to wrestle each other, mm-hmm. or they don't understand how to wrestle each other. It's going to be one of the two. Um, was it AJ? La- was it AJ last night that said that uh, with uh, Cameron teaming with uh, Alicia Fox, she get the liver dream like Hulk Hogan tagging with Hulk Hogan? Yeah, that was <laughs> about, I, I, uh, I think we kind of joined that world. together. Uh, <laughs> No, yeah, it was, no, it was like, no, no, it was like, uh, uh, because those don't know, no, no, oh, fuck, I can't remember her name, Naomi, she, right? Is that the one? Mm-hmm. Is that the stupid yeah. blonde one? Um, no, 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 no that is Cameron. It, Cameron. No, it's Cameron. Okay, she's the yeah. one that was on Tough Enough. Initially, yes, yeah, I tweeted yeah. that, that yeah. oh, great, uh, the person that I hated on both Total Divas and Tough Enough, uh, and, and, uh, the fact that she's the one that said her favorite match was Alicia Fox and yep. Melina, and she got the team yes. with Alicia Fox was like Hulk Hogan teaming with <laughs> Edge to win the World Tag Team Title. That's right, and you tagged Hulk Hogan in, in the. Team I will game. say to to Cameron's credit, she did tweet uh, last night. Um, if Nikki tagged with Melina tonight, could have been my second favorite match of all time. <laughs> Hashtag yeah. losers. Hashtag nice. I am tough enough. Hashtag girl by. <laughs> What's more shameful though is you're following her on Twitter. I'm not following her. On oh, Twitter. okay. Because okay. okay. I don't hate myself, Bobby. Good, good, good. Good, <laughs> good. good to hear. Good. Yes. In the ladies' match that won't make us sad, uh, AJ <laughs> takes on Paige. Although, um, I, I, I hate. I let me say, I hate the last two weeks of these two. I hope we have a good match. You you didn't like last night. I no. could have watched like no. eight hours of them just talking last <laughs> night. At, <laughs> yeah, I, I, how you really, doing? Good. <laughs> no, just their just their facial expressions and all, and the way they were able to sort of portray it, I thought was amazing. Like I think AJ. Yeah. The issue is, you know, AJ clearly has a fan following, and for good reason. Mm. Um. I don't think Paige is as over as people want to think she is. No, uh, with the it, audience, it's not. Um, it's not a one-to-one translation when they bring somebody up from NXT, and I think that's the part that no. they can't figure out. I think know? she got a great reaction WrestleMania weekend. When yes, she won the title. I think since then she's kind of faded. Not. I. I don't personally not necessarily her fault. I think no, the fault no. was they never really. They never really went full force. It's a booking it issue, kind of and it's not like she's done bad in the you're matches. You're going to wrestle these matches. Yeah. Yeah, and, no. and, and her they need to, the and The biggest critique, even for people that even like her wrestling, I think the biggest critique people have given her is that she needs a character. Mm-hmm. Like, I, they need to just straight up go with that anti diva stuff. I don't know why they didn't do it no. because now she just she's just another smiley diva, except she's pale. And it's no diva has had a match on Raw as good as they had in NXT yet. No, absolutely not. Yeah. Absolutely so, I, not. and I think that's continually the problem. I get sad when they come up to Raw because that means I don't see them do good matches anymore, and that's not yeah. a talent issue. And then I, and then I, and then you have people online who don't watch NXT being like, "Hey, you know, this is just another one of those dumb divas they bring up." It's like, no, they can actually be really great wrestlers. Yeah, yeah. like I mean, I'm sorry. Like a, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Wheels. Go ahead. Go ahead, Amen. I was just gonna say, not even like a Paige or an Emma, but even like a Summer Rae. Hey, for example, someone mm-hmm. who has progressed exponentially in NXT, and when she's in NXT, she's a really amazing pro wrestler. But on oh, yeah. Raw, she's just used as you know filler for the Spandangos, Ziggler, whatever, and she doesn't get to portray that she can actually wrestle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's. Uh, I'm sorry. When you look, at, when I think of Paige, I love the girl to death. She is a great wrestler. Watching her NXT stuff, but when I look at Paige and maybe somebody older in that crowd, they're going. What is she just being Daphne 2.0? Because mm-hmm. she does a screaming thing, and Daphne was kind of pale-ish. So I mean, I nobody's think gonna really give her that chance unless they watch NXT. Yeah, I think it. And I don't know if it's even like just limited to the women's division. I think it goes all around with this whole NXT thing. I I have the opinion. Like, keep, uh, I'll use the women for example, though. 
people excited for Bailey coming up to the main roster. Mm-hmm. No, I don't want Bailey coming up to the main roster because the commentators are going to fucking ruin her, and she's just going to be another fucking girl. You know, I'm just, like, they Raw's already ruined a- Adam Rose. They've ruined Emma. You know, they've they fucked up a lot of shit with these NXT talents. Emma comes and back to TV this week. She did, and she just got a roll up win over Cameron, and they got then got beat up afterwards. I I don't know. They they need to just let these characters who have learned something from this experience at NXT take those teachings and bring them to the main roster mm-hmm. instead of just yeah. putting them in filler spots. You know, let Adam Rose do the kitschy stuff that got him over in NXT. You know, I'm ch- who's another example of of someone that just recently came up. I know I'm playing. Uh, Bo Dallas, I think he's doing pretty well, but even then, like he has, you know, you know, he still has to conform to this mentality. And and you know, I think the announcers are treating him well enough, but they're almost on the verge of ruining him. And then it's and it's a it's it's a hard it's a hard um thing to sort of deal with. Mm-hmm. And that's what's weird. It's like it's like apples and oranges because. NXT and Raw, it's the same damn company. Mm-hmm. Don't yeah. change anything. Come on, people. But there's a lot of cooks in the it, kitchen with this. It's not like yeah. one guy's writing the entire better, thing. I, it, I, how much control does um do you, does anyone know how much control Triple H has over like the main show now or like the main product? I think Vince is still there. Compared to his role in NXT, because I, I know his role in NXT uh, is yeah. I know, I know his role in NXT is the head honcho. And maybe the NXT. difference is. Vince is an NXT. Yeah. yeah. I think there the main show is mostly Stephanie now. I think she's like head of creative. Mm-hmm. You know, I think That's you're right. Triple H's talent relations. Yeah. There needs to be some bigger connection as far as getting. Because now that there they're on the network. Yeah. Well, I know between those two, but. <laughs> it's, I, cause it's on the network now. So if people are watching NXT and people are following characters like a Bo Dallas or. A you know an Adam Rose or whatever and or a Sami Zayn or but you're you still want. stuck with the oh there's only so many people can do so many things and you can't stretch those top guys like that so you have no, to you delegate can. you know what I mean I mean yeah I mean it's one thing like all the other shows of any importance are done two nights that's it and it's easy to yeah. kind of roll those out you know and have some kind of you know, all right, tonight we're going to do this and this in Superstars, which means we do this and this in Raw to complement that if there's any connection, or we don't do X and Y on Raw. The next night we do Main Event, which rolls into SmackDown, so there's a continu- continuity there. Uh, yeah, but I think NXT's there's, over there's there. even some... I get that, but there's even some basic stuff that I think they can do. Like, I think the common one was when Bo Dallas made his way up to the main roster, JBO became his biggest supporter, mm. even though he's the one that got Bo Dallas fired in NXT. And he was the one okay. that's like, Bo, you're, you know, he like, you know, that's and, uh, like, like, like that's something where it shouldn't JBL say, excuse me, my character doesn't make sense over here. Exactly. You like, know. I think he should have at least some knowledge that, yeah. you know, the character should yeah. connect. Hey, you know, we did this down in Orlando, right? And yeah. people actually watch NXT now. And yeah, so. Uh, I see Bo Dallas called up. I have a God. question about this. Yes. <laughs> Um, so have you, Sorg, I know you have, mm-hmm. um, have you other guys, have you ever worked like in an office environment where you could just get fired at any moment <laughs> and whether, whether it's true or not, you work for a boss that cultivates that kind of thing. Like anyone could get let go at any moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. Well, let me tell you when you work in an environment like that, you are much less likely to voice any sort of opinion whatsoever. Yes, and it even, sounds even like... if you see people who do voice opinions getting their way or, you know, rising to the top, there is always that feeling of, if I step out of line, I'm going to get fired. So maybe I should just keep my mouth shut, keep my job, Speci- and collect a good paycheck. Especially with budget cuts. Yeah. And like, I don't know. I think... Okay, we're going to use that example. I think JBL has enough pull to where he could be <laughs> like, hey, guys, hey, hey, Hunter, like, can we... Well, can in I the instance to- of JBL, I don't think he gives a shit. Yeah, that's well, that's a, yeah and that's the I issue. That and that's the issue. That's the issue with the commentary team in general. I feel like there's a big <laughs> sense of, like, I don't give a they, shit. Like, they have tenure, and they know it. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're and they have tenure the to oh. sit there for three hours on Monday night and sometimes Which on pay per views. Listen, if we're if we're gonna mention the commentary team, I posted in the Facebook account about. Oh God! Which Royal Rumble did I say? Ninety nine. Oh, ninety nine yes. when there was young Michael. Yep. Oh, fuck! Lawler. It was just him and Jerry Lawler, and I wanted to fucking puncture my ears with an ice pick. <laughs> it was terrible. But now, Mike, like, like, so I mentioned, Michael Cole now has that tenure to where he doesn't have to try. Mm-hmm. You but know, he's, like, he's so much better now than he was. If Jerry Lawler has tenure. Somebody tell him he doesn't have to drink that diamond. Do they give him everything? <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, you're gonna have Jerry another heart attack. Anyway. Come on, buddy. <laughs> That's why I think one week they should just like maybe at, take out JBL just one week and then put in like or let if JBL has like a project or he's kind of climbing I, another mountain or whatever. I thought let him were... climb his let him, let him climb his mountain and then just throw in Tom Phillips and see how I, it works. And I thought you were gonna fresh. say what they needed to do one week was bathe in Mountain Dew diet. Um, anyways, we got one more match we didn't get to. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I, 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 aren't okay. they doing that with um, Renee Young? Aren't they uh, letting her? She's on Superstars now. Oh yeah, yeah she's on Superstars, okay. and she's the first female, and mm-hmm, that's that's been on a main <laughs> show. So has, yeah. has anybody heard her? Is it good? She's uh, not she's, great in NXT. I will say that much. She's a great. I love Renee Young as a backstage interviewer and as like hosting like the panels like and stuff like that. I disagree. I disagree. She's I like not her. a good. Com- she's okay. not a good commentator though. No, she's not a good time. I, I, I like her. I like her at the table in NXT. But then again, there's sometimes three to four people there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I want to see what he does, what she does on a two man team in. Um, oh, that doesn't sound right. The biggest problem. Um, Superstars. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone Jordan, watches, no. for those that watch NXT, watch back. The biggest problem with Renee in commentary is that she doesn't call moves. Anytime, any move, time a move is hit, even if it's not like a big, big move, she just goes oh. Like she doesn't really call. Oh, I don't think she's a play-by-play. Is she? At least it's not what a what a maneuver. Well, not play-by-play, <laughs> but like like someone will hit like a, a like a, a elbow from like the ground. Bro, and she'll go. Yo, like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa! You know what? Go watch no, some old. Some, vi- someone... Go go watch some old Saturday Night's main event with Vince yeah. McMahon, Vic sir. What a maneuver! Oh my! Vince McMahon is look at that. So anything that you can hold up as an excellent announcer. Big big cast. No, but Sebastian still, I mean, before. but he's like still the bar. You know, I up. wait, wait, wait. I, I was sitting there today watching my last <laughs> two episodes available in the in the the eighties collection of Saturday Night's main event, and I'm thinking about okay, Vince McMahon, and I'm listening to this, and I'm like, really. Did anybody think this was like the top of the line even in the 80s in comparison to like yeah. sports casting, anything like that? Then I remember I did, but I was Vin- a kid. Vince was the boss. <laughs> Vince was the boss, therefore it didn't matter, and there therefore is not gonna get any better than it was as far as an announcer yeah. goes. That's true. You know, I, think I, about that. The, our bar for announcers for WWE, I mean, we don't have a Gordon Soley in WWE. We had a Vince McMahon instead for many, 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 mm-hmm. many years. You know, right. the next yes. we had was Gorilla Monsoon. Gorilla Monsoon, greater than Vince at the commentary table? Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Hands yeah. down. Hands we down. also had Jesse Ventura. But, Macho well, Man. That's the other better. side. That's yeah. the, <laughs> at the, oh, then there's those experiments. I bet that's the other side Ooh, of the coin when you're talking when you're talking Ventura or Piper at the table or or Heenan. You know, I mean that's that's the color. You know, it's it's, it's something different. Um but uh, is Vince is is Michael Cole better than Vince? Yeah. I, yes. Uh, I guess. Yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. So. Yeah, yeah. He is. In general. Because I it's really just changing of the times, I think, from the eighties or mm-hmm. even the early nineties. I remember someone talked about how WWF used to have like some for the pay-per-views they would do like some radio cast or something like that that people could listen to. Or basically it's like commentary. So you can listen if you didn't buy the pay-per-view or whatever. And apparently Vince McMahon did it for a long time and they were talking about like how hard that must have been to listen to. Because he doesn't call it wrestling moves. He just calls them maneuvers. What a maneuver. So the, you don't know what to do with your head. And it, it's the worst thing to listen to. Uh, I, yeah, but yeah. I, you, well, okay, wait, wait, wait. Let's put it. Let's put aside that. Have you ever listened to? And I, 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 I doubt you have. But have you ever listened to amateur wrestling on the radio? Oh yeah! Wow, yeah. I take that and put it in a pro, re- pro wrestling setting. And if they're doing it right, that's how it should come off. I have the <laughs> worst time. It's like, hey, your nephew's wrestling in freaking Hershey at this tournament. It's on the radio. I'm like, I'm, I, 
I'm, I, I, I'll try, <laughs> you know, um, I don't know enough. I mean, I know, I, I know enough about amateur wrestling to be dangerous, right? But I don't know enough to follow the guy that knows what the hell he's talking about on the radio, <laughs> you know, and, you know, in that That's succession, you know, hell, I, I have hard enough uh, time listening to Steelers games and hockey games on, on the radio. So yeah, I know, I know no, I'll I'll disagree with the hockey games because that's how I got into <laughs> hockey in the first place. Oh really? Put on the radio. Yeah. Oh, okay, we have the best freaking radio team for the Penguins though. Yeah, no, no, that's he, true. That's he's riding true. his oh, bicycle tired. all the way to school. Oh my! You know, it's you know Elvis has left the building. Come on, <laughs> it's the best. If you haven't listened to Mike Lang on on Penguins radio, uh, it's I'm sorry, I'm getting off on a it's whole great. Other thing. It is. I mean, oh. it's, you like hockey. It's so, if you don't like it, hockey, then you're just gonna hate yourself it's, it's, it's true kind of too. funny because if you have the penguins app people listen to that and watch it on tv with the tv oh that's it. great and it's great that is yep. the best that is the best because you don't like nobody ever likes those commentators on tv yeah <laughs> ever <laughs> ever um let's go 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 get a mike lang highlight reel on youtube or something so guys uh we didn't even, there's a main event yeah, we kind of expect Cena to win this, right? Because there's a plan oh, C. Man, there's of a plan John C Cena's coming. Win sword. He's he the does. best man for the job. <laughs> Come on. He's so nice giving his title. Oh, to Would any of you agree if Reigns wins the title right now this weekend at Battleground, it is probably the worst thing for him? Yep. Too soon. It's, too it's soon. the worst thing for him, and it's the worst thing for the entire storyline. Why is Roman Reigns in that match? Why did Triple H put Roman Reigns in that match? It makes no goddamn sense. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I said I said on the sh on the watching Raw last night. I think it's good Roman Reigns, uh, match wise, he's able to hang with these bigger guys. Um, you know his wrestling quality is you know right on par with the rest of them. His mic skills are not. No, not yet. But, um, They're coming. I, I'm glad. I he's think getting he's, there. He's fitting in well with this main event business. I I I I'm interested. You saying his his wrestling skills are on par with the rest of them. Um, Kane is in a. Main event title matchup again in 2014. <laughs> I, I love Kane to death, but God damn it, Kane. Just, just do whatever politician stuff you want to do. <laughs> yeah. Sell some you've been returns. Since, you've been doing this since 98. Honestly, even before that, if you want to break kayfabe. Like, let's fucking... Let's he, just was he was he diesel. He was diesel for a little bit. Where's the big show? Big Show is... Why isn't Big Show the big guy they put in the matches? Know. He's been on pre-shows and stuff. Yeah. Uh, is he hurt like, or something? Like, Big Show's, like, still around, and, like, Mark Henry's still around, and, like, yeah. I don't get why these guys are still around. Like, I love Mark Henry, but, like, Kali. why is he still around? <laughs> There's a... Kali. Well, wait, wait, here's... Oh, God, I don't want to get into this. But, uh, look at the time, but... Um, <laughs> There is, when you get a sermon, we talk about CM Punk pulling a Jericho. He'll probably be back sporadically, and it'll be awesome and great, and it'll be just periods of time, and he'll do great things, and he'll get years. a lot more money for doing a lot less, right? <laughs> Anywhere from a week to 30 years, yep. Yeah, that's right, a week to 30 years. Um, but then you have guys like... Then you have guys like Kane. You have guys like Big Show. And and hear me out on this. So you got guys that came, Big Show. I'm trying to remember somebody else that would fit into this. Help me if you think of somebody as I describe this. Mark Henry. But, oh, no, no, no. Um, oh, yeah, actually, Mark Henry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, again, first of all, commonality between these three guys. We mentioned they're big guys, right? They're a mountain yeah. to climb when you need it, you know? Um, and also, a second thing with all those guys, they're dependable. They've all been mm -hmm. around for, like, 15 years consistently with the WWE F whatever. They're company guys. I don't know. They're about company the, guys. Kane, Big Show, maybe. Okay. Uh, I, Mark Henry has not been dependable for a long time. No, uh, no, 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 no. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Injury prone. Injury prone, and also he had a big issue with like. Gaining and then losing. It's true, and true. Again. But still, in the long run, I think he fits the mold for what I'm getting at here. Mm -hmm. But as you go along, they're your. I like to say, like, okay, we're gonna pull the big show card to make Brock Lesnar look, you know, badass at Royal Rumble to build him to his match at WrestleMania with Taker. Right? It's a big show okay. card. You know, um, Kane. And you're like, well, we need Kane because we need a threat, and we didn't really build a threat because we were too worried about uh uh you know 
John Cena and whatnot, or Daniel Bryan, and that didn't work out. Um, so we need a threat to throw in this match. So to be a heavy, to do, et cetera, et cetera. And Kane will make anybody look awesome in the long run. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. and really, considering his freaking age and size and everything, he can still move. And I can't think of a last time he turned in a really horrible match, to be honest. My my thing is this, though. But 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 there are these... these, uh, Sorry, let let me finish this and I'll toss to you. But... There are these guys that are there. They're they're in your back pocket. We need to live, let Big Show and Mark Henry have their healing times, you know, because just, I mean, Big Show, it's a miracle he's still going, to be honest. If you watch that documentary, you understand why, um, you know, that they can let them do do something like that. So they're able to, they, they're going to keep these cards in their back pocket for the dependability when they need to fill a gap like they're doing right now with Kane. Uh, Eamon? I understand the gap filling part. Uh, but I'll use my point about the whole thing is I'll use the example you made of the Brock Lesnar Big Show thing before the match with Taker WrestleMania. What the first reaction that a lot of people gave to that match was, "What is this 2002?" My issue with the Canes and the Big Shows and the Mark Henrys is that I understand their mountains to climb, and and the whole idea is that if they you know they can put somebody over by being big guys. The problem is the matchups and the scenarios have all been exhausted. Mm-hmm. Well, Who is problem. John Cena? Is John Cena overcoming Kane this Sunday? Really? Like, like John Cena? John Cena has overcome everything, even Roman Reigns. Like Roman Reigns beat Kane and the New Age Outlaws at WrestleMania. Yeah, but John three Cena. Minutes. John Cena had trouble lifting Kane last night for yes. some unknown reason. Who was supposed to buy that? Who was, was supposed weird. to buy that? That's the case. Yeah. I guess he was just dehydrated, just real <laughs> tired. I have the flu, guys. I'm sorry. Same I, didn't, with the, I didn't have any chicken soup, guys. I'm I didn't sorry. have my pretty pebbles. Same with the Randy Orton, when we had Randy Orton Big Show at Survivor Series. The whole mentality was that Randy Orton is in trouble because he's facing this giant dude. But we've seen this match 10,000 times. Mm-hmm. And you, I don't mind having the big guys be overcome, but find new big guys. Bruce like, said. Well, that, yeah. And Bruce is not a huge guy, but I think he's the new heavy. You know, If he plays it right, he yeah. could be big show in five years you know that he's the guy that calls out he'll have the worst record you've ever seen but you know Mm. uh but he's the guy that's going to get punched off he's the one that's going to get punched out by a tiny boxer in five years at wrestlemania (laughs) absolutely (laughs) he's going to make some good money off of that yeah it's great for him um but like you mentioned with big show like how his health issues and and, Mm -hmm. you know the fact that he's still doing this is a miracle. I think that's a testament to, hey, maybe give this guy a bit of a break. He's been in your company since 1999. You know, he's done all of these things. He's been sort of your face as like your giant for so long. He's gonna have his Hall of Fame spot. Mm-hmm. You know, he's gonna he, he's set. Yeah. You know, just give him a break. Just because you're set doesn't mean you stop. If you don't uh, have yeah. to. Yeah. Look at Hulk Hogan. I, I mean, look at like, if if wrestling in general. Race, if if he me. does take a break, it could be the end of his career. Yep. You know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Look at Chris Jericho. Yeah. I mean, he gets a liaison job. Like, I, I think he also I, gets. I don't, a, I don't know if you talked about this, but I'm so lukewarm in this Chris Jericho thing. What, to the point where, when WWE.com does an article up ranking the top moments when Chris Jericho returned and can have like ten entrants, that's a problem. <laughs> I like that. I like this conversation, but I don't want to have it this week because of time. I, we will hold okay. that. Please table that for now. But I do want to have that conversation maybe next week. Uh, so, but in the meantime, if anybody has so some, if anybody has any thoughts on the Chris Jericho return, whether you like it, whether you don't, uh, please hit us up on the social medias, Mayhem Show, Wrestling Mayhem Show on the Facebook, Google Plus, in the Facebook group. What you got there, Wheels? Uh, something to talk about. Did they retire Big Gold last night? <sighs> Oh, Again, yeah. another conversation. A lot of Real speculation quick, about that. A lot of speculation. Yeah. He handed it off to Ric Flair. What an interesting way to retire the gold, though, huh? It wasn't. It wasn't. I don't think it was just because they handed it off. Apparently, JBL said something like, "There's only one title now," or something like that. Yeah, yeah. There's a little more, um, but there's they didn't said anything. Real subtle. We'll mm-hmm. see if uh, if he's on. Does John Cena come out with it on SmackDown? And what happens this weekend? I mean, if he com- doesn't come out with this weekend, you got your answer. But what of John Cena's belt scarf? I was just about to say. <laughs> <laughs> just, well, I'll tell you this weekend. Shachi started uh, tried the belt scarf with um, a couple of the RWA belts that were lying around. Yeah, yes, he, he did. You gotta take better care of those, buddy. Um, so, and uh, it, and I think he almost fell over. Um, anyways. Uh, That's because he's not John Cena. 
Uh, yeah. Only John yeah. Cena can lift that and Kane. Right. right. Okay. Nope. Nope. Can't lift Kane. <laughs> That's why he can't lift Kane. He's tired from carrying <laughs> around the belt scarf. <laughs> uh, Tony Garza is joining us in the chat, and he says, "No, not Rusev. Don't uh, don't feed him as uh, odds to Cena. As it's it, dude, it's happening. Yeah. It's it's sooner or later. You know what? What yeah. do you do with the monster? The monster's not going to keep dominating. It's going to keep dominating until the guy that you need to climb the mountain." That's that's what's happening. So I'm kind of I don't yeah. think Jack Swagger unless they really want to make Jack Swagger into something right now for some reason. Actually, he's not winning this weekend. I quit quick because I know we're wrapping up. Yes, I don't agree with that because I just watched the um, the Brock Lesnar uh, sort of like early run uh, recently. He beat the shit out of people like for fucking like three years and mm. like like he and his end was against Goldberg and Goldberg was the only one they really saw, except for maybe like Eddie but yeah. like. That's Goldberg true. was the guy they put out. Take but her. he was Take the her. people he was beating the shit out of were like main event people, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Former world champions and stuff like that. Rusev's been having squash matches. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. It's way too early for But that. who's to say he can't but hey, Brock Lesnar had to wrestle Jeff and Matt Hardy fucking <laughs> for the first three months. Like, that's fine. I wouldn't say Big E was a squash match though. That's Big E true. got some offense in. I, I do true. like that they're not just giving him the normal Monster squash match, squash match, squash match. Oh, real mm-hmm. competition! I lose. Mm-hmm. Push. Yes. That mm-hmm. match, that, that match, so often. that match squashed my heart with enjoyment. <laughs> Guys, what'd you learn from wrestling this week? Amen. You first. Oh Jesus! Um, I learned <laughs> from wrestling this week that uh, what we talked about NXT and Raw need to be on the same wavelength. That's what I learned this week. Okay. Uh, what about you, Bobby? I learned three things this week. No, oh, please. <laughs> oh, Bobby. Damien Sandow. Bobby going for the record. Damien wow. Sandow and Adam Rose can sell me any hot dog that they wish. What? Oh, uh, the Great Collie is still trying to get up. <laughs> from getting beat up by Bo Dallas. And somebody needs to find RVD because I think he went to another dimension in the ring apron. Jeez. What about you, LB? Uh... I'm still lost on that last one. <laughs> Remember, wow. he got sucked into the apron. I, I might have been cooking when that happened. I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, oh, uh, pretty much anything uh, that uh, Dean Ambrose says nowadays will get turned into a meme on a website. Easily. <laughs> anything. Easily. Easily. Yeah. Is that all you got? I, I, yeah, just the one thing, Bobby. I just learned the <laughs> one thing. Just the one. <laughs> no, that's what he said last night. Is that yeah. all you got? Wheels, what yeah. about you? Oh, what did I learn, Sork? I learned that <laughs> when there is a basically falls count anywhere, hardcore match, anything and any... One can be used in a match. Uh, attack. Oh, a blow up doll is all I gotta say. Jeez, Jeez man. Well, that, well, it did say a lot. I'm assuming the blow up doll was used in the match. <laughs> yeah, there, there, was, there was something interesting that happened at the end of that match with the blow up doll, too. But, anyways, um, uh, you know, similarly, uh, from an indie show, uh, when they say to move, you freaking move. <laughs> When they didn't yeah. move, they just like sailed three rows into people. The people didn't move. Yeah, they will come at you. Yeah. They will guys. land on you. They yeah, that was that was there were some close calls Saturday night. Yeah, Resurrection Six. Check it out. Sorgatronmedia.com slash store coming out this week. Oh. Uh, digital should be up tomorrow, by the way, on Wednesday okay. of this week. So uh, already edited. I hope it rendered upstairs. Uh, anyways. On that note, <laughs> guys. Oh, I learned. Sword, no, that's I did. Le- I did learn did something. Learn? That is what uh, I learned. Sword. That is what I learned. I said what I learned, and I forgot I did say what I learned. And now I'm going to end the oh. show, guys. Go to wrestlingmayhemshow.com. So much stuff. There's wrap ups, after shows. Sometimes there's after shows, and uh, an indie mayhem's happening. Sometimes a wonderful uh, article about how LB is changing his ways in his fandom. Like he did with John Cena recently. And it's worked out fairly well for him so far. You can get this it's, show any way you want. Great. iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, on apps, on audio, on video format. Some people Chromecast this show on a big screen. My head on a 42-inch screen. 
Yeah, oh, no. that's what we want. Um, my head. <laughs> this head. On a 42 inch screen. <laughs> my head, no! Oh, it's gonna eat your cat. Um, you can also hit us up to that email address at Good times. They're getting tired. Good times at WrestlingMamShow dot com four one two two zero six WMS zero or hit the call button over on the website. Um, also, thanks ba- Basic Sickness for our themes, ingoing and outgoing at BasicSickness dot com. And you, a big thanks to Mike Allen at Mike Allen PR for tweets and show notes all night long. And you can join us here live every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time at live.sogertronmedia.com. 11 p.m. for the Indie Mayhem Show on the same Bat channel. Uh, with that, we'll see you guys next week. And But first, we have an announcement from LB <laughs> that I oh, almost no. forgot about. LB, take it away what is it? and take us uh, out of here. Uh, uh, okay. Um, so I've been uh, talking for a couple of weeks teasing that something marvelous might happen and uh this week i can officially announce i am launching a brand new podcast it's about comic books and it is a uh uh, part of the sorgatron media family the first episode episode uh double zero will be launching next week watch this space you'll have it with your uh, sorgatron media podcasts uh to listen to on uh on tuesdays um, it's going to be a short episode. It's just kind of an introduction. And from there we are off to the races. We're going to be talking about all things, comic books, lots of guests, lots of fun. Uh, in the meantime, it, you can follow us at panel riot.tumblr.com and you can follow us on Twitter at panel riot. Go and check us out. And, uh, I am uh, very excited for this endeavor. Uh, so listen to that and thank you for listening to this. This has been the wrestling mayhem show. And as Sorg is so fond of saying, mayhem 